All righty, we are live on Off the Dome. Welcome, Flat Earth Dave, the host of the Flat Earth Podcast. How are you doing today, man? Like, great to see you on this podcast. I've been looking forward to this. I'm super excited to sit down and shoot the shit with you. Matt, and uh, you're, the name of your podcast is Off the Dome, but you believe the Earth is a spinning globe. Absolutely, I do. <laughs> <laughs> so what's with oh, wait, the name? Wait. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to guess you believe the Earth is flat. No, no, none true. I know it's not a globe. What do you, what, what, uh, what, just dive right into it, because why not? What uh, type of object do you think we live on? I think we live on a flat, immovable, stationary plane. Highs and lows, mountains and valleys and everything, but water shows that the earth is level. Large bodies of water at rest lay flat, testably, scientifically, provably flat, and uh, that's something we're going to talk about, something we can look into. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. Globe earthers have misconceptions of what flat earthers believe. Globe earthers, I said, you know what? I heard about this flat earth. Let me Google flat earth. And boom, they Google flat earth. They get this. This is not yeah. what flat earth is. This No mm -hmm. flat earther even conceives of anything like this. Right? This is what globers, globe earthers think flat earth is. So what is flat earth? Well, the world that we live in, the world that we can explore is clearly not moving, not spinning like they tell us, and flat. So where do we live? We live in what I call the world pond, right? A pond is a body of water that has a container. That's the land that's around the pond that's higher than the level, level of the pond, right? Lower one side of the pond, what happens? The water is going to find its next level, right? So what is the container of our world? The container of our world is the shoreline of our world pond, and that is Antarctica. They tell us Antarctica is a continent at the bottom of the world, of the ball. They tell us it's the highest land on Earth. At least they tell us something true. It, but the truth is Antarctica is bigger than the rest of the world combined. Mm -hmm. It's unexplorable because it's off limits, right? In 1959, they came up with the Antarctic Treaty. And uh, 12 nations signed on. Now another 50, whatever. Now there's like 50, like everyone signed on. And basically saying, yeah. no, no one is allowed to explore Antarctica. You can't even question the treaty until the year 2041. No treaty has ever mm -hmm. lasted that long, but this one mm -hmm. goes uncontested. Antarctic Treaty, um, you can look it up and then, uh, then you go from there. Back to mm -hmm. you. Interesting. So I was going to ask, uh, so with the whole Antarctica, um, so your belief is that nobody has traveled to Antarctica and they are not allowed to go to? There, and, is that correct? No, no not, not, not quite. Um, okay. you, can, you can go, you can take a guided tour to Antarctica. They'll, mm -hmm. uh, they'll take you to this peninsula. Um, mm -hmm. Let me pull up my image again. Uh, they'll take you, where did it go? I just lost Antarctica. Um, they'll take you just to the little peninsula that sticks out off of Santiago. They'll show you some penguins, which, which may not even be indigenous to Antarctica. And they'll show you um, icebergs but you're not allowed to explore the outer lands at all. Mm. So, you know, it's very, very restricted. And anybody that tries to go there is turned around by force. And we have videos of um, some fishermen that tried to go towards Antarctica and they were stopped by a Navy destroyer, mm -hmm. told to leave immediately. When you go to Antarctica, they take you here. Gigantic because it's bigger than, you know, some countries. Um, mm -hmm. But you're not allowed to go out here. What's out here? Are we under a dome? Is there more land? Are there more continents? Mm -hmm. Are there more oceans? We don't know. Interesting. Okay. Well, actually, I kind of want to backtrack a bit. And part of my understanding is I want to see like the journey you've taken to come to this um, belief that you have of the flat earth. Mm -hmm. um, so like, where did this journey start for you, essentially? And what was the building blocks to which led to you believe, which led to you believe the perspective you believe nowadays? Good, good, good question. I was doing um, a podcast about conspiracies, you know, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I hate using that word, but about deceptions in the world. And um, people started sending me flutter stuff and I ignored it. Um, mm -hmm. Hold on one second. Um, all right. Sorry about that. I just had to quickly respond to something important. Yeah, no worries. Um, so I... Um, was forced to look into it reluctantly. And I went in with a closed mind. Hey, 
you know, I'm just going to prove you morons wrong. You know, mm -hmm. everyone knows the earth is a globe. We learned it 2000 years ago. And uh, I found out everything I thought about the globe, every proof that I thought I had is untrue. You know, Bill Nye, mm -hmm. the lion guy with the bow tie says when a <laughs> boat goes over the curve of a ball, you can't you lose it from the bottom up. He's absolutely right. Unfortunately, we don't live in Narnia on a ball, right? We live on a flat plane and there's reasons that things disappear from the bottom up, not going over a physical ball. For example, on a, uh, if we live on a, on a ball, like they tell us, you know how um, the circumference of our globe ball is? How big is it? Yeah, what's the circumference? I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. So this is the point. And by the way, don't feel bad. I yeah. didn't know any of the questions I'm going to ask you when I first got into this. Right. But I defended the globe with just assumed proofs and I knew none of the details. So it's 24,901 miles around. If you use globe math, a six foot tall person standing at the edge of the water should see a physical horizon no farther than three miles away. No, because of the curve, the water is going to drop below my eyesight because that's six. You, you said 30 miles, correct? Three. At three miles, this is globe math. At three miles, the drop is six feet. So if I'm six feet tall, mm -hmm. I'm only going to see an edge, a physical edge, three miles away. And then anything, any water beyond that will be below that physical horizon. You understand? Mm. And the problem yeah. is we can see much farther than that. That's why you just said, no, no, you mean 30 miles. 30 miles, it's, a mu it's much, much, deep. there's hundreds of feet of curvature, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so... You know, when something is, you know, when something is farther than that, you should not be able to see it unless you believe it's magically refracting up to eye level and, you know, mm -hmm. then you see it. Um, but we can zoom in, you know, today's consumer optics have made it so we can see too far. Like, for example, do you see a boat out here? No, I do not. No. But as I zoom in and increase the angular size, a boat shows up, mm -hmm. right? Right. And so perspective, things get smaller. Now, as I zoom out, we know that this thing is in view, a straight line from me. And as I zoom out, it starts to disappear from the bottom up. And there's a couple of reasons for that. The, the little waves in the foreground block it like my finger cannot block my chin to my nose unless it's closer to you. And then it could block the whole bottom of my face. Mm -hmm. Right. So. This is just showing that things disappear because of angular resolution, right? Here's another example. Right here, we got a camera level at the top of the table. And as we zoom in, increasing the angular size, all of a sudden you can see this, we'll call it a boat. We can see it. Mm -hmm. And as I zoom out, it's angular size, the reflection from the table, the miraging, make it disappear. But if I lift up, I can now see farther than that thing. Right. So people go, well, on a ball, if you go up higher, you can see farther over the ball. Same thing on a flat earth. If I stack three more boats on top of that. Oh, when I'm zoomed out, you'd see the top three, but you wouldn't see the bottom one. And if I dragged it farther away, next one would disappear. It disappears from the bottom up. These are things that they don't teach you about your eyes in school. Hmm. Interesting. So I know to add on to this, I know, I think from this example right there, I think one of the ex examples or reasons why this would happen i think with due to the lack of resolution in our eyes is our eyes aren't able to pick up that small minute uh bump uh, or object in the uh, distance we're on but the I same page well too yeah i agree with that um but as well too is i think what's really important as well too is when you do look out at the ocean and i think you mentioned this about the water as well too how you said the water's per, uh, flat right but i think a better way to explain that is the water is perpendicular to the um the globe or in your case the flat earth itself correct is that something that you might agree with um i'm not exactly sure what you're saying other than you know you're you're saying that any point of the water the flatness of the water is perpendicular to the center point of the earth as gravity yes okay correct so, yes. so so you should be able to see um curvature physical curvature and we never can we tested it with lasers with mirror flashes with um radar and stuff so for example here is a spot in Alusia, france where it's a famous viewing spot over the water because out here is mount canagoo which is 175 miles away now mm -hmm. globe math 
calculating the height of the observer and the distance, says that the top of Mount Kanagu should be a mile below the physical curve. But two times a year, when the sun is migrating in between its two um, tropics, it line, the sun lines up with the viewer. Now, you can't see Mount Kanagu at night if it was in view because there's no light coming off of it. The light bouncing off of it from the sun isn't strong enough to push through the thickness of the atmosphere, just like you can't see the far end under the wall at the, under a pool, even if the water's clean on the far end because just the density of, the, of, the, of the, what you're looking through. So two times a year, the sun gets right in line with Mount Kanagu and it backlights it. And right here, the top of Mount Kanagu should be a mile below the curve, but it's not, it's right there. We can see too far. Our consumer day optics have blown away their nonsense. And the only answer that you can say is this is a refracted image. Well, how's a refracted image blocking the actual sun? It's right there, it's clear. We see in straight lines, things get too small to see, but when you mm -hmm. zoom in on them, they come back into view. Interesting. I don't necessarily have an ex explanation for that. I understand the concept of a mirage. I do. And how, how I know there's a picture of the Chicago skyline from 60 yeah. miles away. Yeah. And you can see it. And according to quote unquote curved science, yeah. you shouldn't be able to see it. But because of the ability of the water to refract light itself, you're able to see that. So, I know for myself, I do understand that. I do not scientifically know how to disprove this. Right. Yourself. So right let's talk but about I do, you. I, I do have a question, though, about, say, the sun itself. Yeah. yeah. Um, <clears> so, come... do, by the way, so do I. Um, okay. but before, before you ask the question, don't yeah. forget the question. Chicago. Now, mirages are a real thing, but they're wavy and they change with atmospheric conditions mm -hmm. and uh, they change. Yeah, you can see it on the road when you're driving on a hot day. Yeah, well, that, that's uh, yeah. that's yeah, that's and, and then mm -hmm. there's there's Fata Morgana, you know, mirages, but it's upside down. Um, but we have a time lapse of Chicago that goes over 24 hours, right? Day and night, changing temperatures, changing humidity, changing everything. And it's still there and it never moves. We've also gotten on a boat, put a camera on the mirage that, sh that we shouldn't be able to see, the city. And we drove the boat watching the camera with the whole time. And when does the mirage turn into the real thing? It never, we never lost sight of it. Mm -hmm. So that right there proves that it's not a mirage. We were told by that famous weatherman, you know, oh, it's a mirage because, it, you know, it, it, it's not there. You're actually seeing a mirage. And he explains how mirages work. And it's half, mm -hmm. half, half right. Um, but we've proven that wrong by taking the distance, what, driving the boat question, But what is, what is the distance that we can see now through, say, the Earth is flat and I'm mm -hmm. standing on a completely flat surface? Mm -hmm. How far can I see? Um, without any interruptions to any landscape changes or buildings or objects that may be well, in my way. Well, I'd be it, able to see all the way across because in theory, if it's flat, I should be able to see across because if I look up in the skylight, there's nothing obstructing my way. I'm able to shoot or I'm able to get the light from up in the sky directly straight into my eyes with no obstruction from right. but you don't, millions of miles away. Well, How well, come hold I on. cannot see yeah, yeah. So, uh, well, an object from say 300 miles away if it's not obstructed? I'm going to explain that very easily. And, and, and your, uh, your comment that they're millions of miles away, that's something that uh, scientism has told you. You don't know that these lights that you're seeing in the sky are millions of miles away. And I could actually prove that they're not. I can't prove how far they are. I yeah. can't prove how big they are. But I can prove they're not what you're seeing. Well, so we'll, we'll, we'll touch Come on that. To that. I'm looking, yeah. Yeah. So, I'm so imagine you're in a, in a big swimming pool, Olympic-sized swimming pool. You're at one end, and you go under the water, and you look Toward, and I drew um, a paint, uh, I don't know, a big smiley face on the wall mm, yeah. underwater. You can't see it. Why can't you through see the it? Through the water. You can't see it. But as you swim towards it, it'll come into view, right? How, how far away? Um, a 50-yard pool. You can't mm. see it in a 20-yard pool. Trust me. I'm a swimmer. I know. Perfectly <laughs> clear water. You can't see the other end. Now, maybe yeah, if there I'll was a light on the other yeah. end, you could see the light because the light can push through. But the thickness of the air, just like here, okay? These, these mountains are all the same color. This is the same color, same, 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 mm -hmm. same. But the air just becomes more and more dense, and then it turns into sky. There's more mountains out here. But if you're in the pool and you're only a foot under the water and you look up, you can see the ceiling. Mm -hmm. Okay? And it was just farther away than the other end of the pool, supposedly, what, depending on what size room you're in, of mm -hmm. course. And that's because you're looking through less density, right? 
less density. Mm -hmm. When you're looking up, you know, our atmosphere uh, is very thin, but when you're looking down, right? And the way I, the way I look at it is get, um, get a tray, get a cookie sheet or whatever, um, you know, something to put like a three, two or three inches of water in it and put a, a ruler upright, a one foot ruler. You yeah. stick it in, you're looking straight up, there's three inches of water. The ruler's under three inches of water. I put it over to 45 degrees, maybe like four inches of the rulers in the water. I put it down a little farther, all of a sudden 11 inches in the water and a little farther, the whole thing's under, under, under water. So the question to you is how far can we see? Depends on atmospheric conditions. It depends on the height that you're at. Um, can I see New York City from where I am in Connecticut? Yes, but the bottoms of the buildings are missing a little bit, okay? And that's mm -hmm. not due to curvature. That has to do with the same reason um, that the boat disappeared, but also another reason, over distance, things get compressed. This building, you can't see the bottom floors. Now a glober would say it's over the curve, but notice that these porches or these terraces, they're all the same height. But what's happening here, we're getting what's called atmospheric compression. And they literally compress so where you can't see them anymore. You zoom in a little farther, maybe you can see them, but it becomes a point where you can't see them. The wave front edge hides, hides things. Like this boat, you can't see the deck, the back deck. It's un it looks like it's underwater, right? And if that yeah. boat was all the way out here behind this little wave right here, the half the boat would be missing because mm -hmm. the boat would be smaller. This wave might not be all the way at the horizon. And then a glober would say, oh, it's because it's behind a curve. No, it's just behind a wave. It's just behind, you know, we're losing its angular size. Interesting. That's, that's an interesting fact I did not know. And it does explain why you may not be able to see something if it's above the horizon or above the, in my perspective, the curvature of the earth. Um, but I do want to kind of switch gears and go back to the sun. I know we are going to talk about that a bit. Um, so how does, for starters, how does the sun and moon rotate around the um, flat earth? So how or what, what's the motion? So yeah, like the, both, I guess. Yeah, like how, so, how would you explain it? So here's the motion that we see, and they just happen to be opposed to each other. They're not always opposed to each other. Um, they circle around. Let's talk about, let me, let me share my screen, actually. Um, yeah, absolutely. Go for it. I'm going to show you, uh, my, the, this is my app. It's called the Flatter Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Love it. Block Love App, <laughs> right? And so yeah. let, let's just talk about the motion. Then we'll talk about what the sun might be, where it is, okay? So the sun goes around, let me speed it up, and um, it goes around once every 24 hours. And as you see, it's gaining distance on the moon because it's going a little faster than the moon. Mm -hmm. And after 28 times around, it will lap the moon. So the moon, as it's getting farther away from it, <coughs> excuse me, um, is changing its phases. And when it's opposed to it, you'll have a full moon and then it'll start waning as it comes back. So a lunar month is 28 days, give or take, you know, mm -hmm. whatever, a couple hours, whatever it is. So... So the sun keeps track of the hours and the days. The, the moon cre keeps track of the weeks and the months. And if I turn on the stars, the stars are going in the same direction. No matter where you are on Earth, the sun, moon, and stars rise in the east and set in the west. Clockwise, counterclockwise, nonsense. They all come from the east and go to the west, no matter where you are, because they're circling over the Earth. So the stars, by the way, will lap the sun once a year. Mm -hmm. So the sun will slowly drift um, from constellation to constellation for about a month in each constellation. So the stars keep track of the seasons and the years. So let's just uh, go a little farther. So right now it's November 9th. I'm going to jump forward to December. And December is our winter solstice. Where are you located? What state? Uh, I live in Canada, actually. Surprise. All right. Surprise. So it's cold. You know why so it's cold? cold. Look cold. how far away the sun is in Canada. Look, it's mm. all the way out here. But guess what? It's over South America, Central, Central America, and it's going to go right over Australia. They're going to have their summer because the sun is over them. You ever been out on a long street, a long straight street where you have street lights? Okay. Yes. Imagine the, the, you're standing under a light. That's your summer sun. Unfortunately, it's not really your summer sun because the sun never gets that close to you. But if you were in Miami, let's jump forward. Watch this. It may feel like it's right over you then. Five, six. So in June, the sun is over the Tropic of Cancer, which is that inner yellow line, 
right? Mm-hmm. So if you if it comes around, if you were in Miami, it sun's directly over you. So that's the street light that's right over you. The street light that's way down the road is lower in the sky. It's farther away. That's your winter sun. So right now, and this is uh, June 10th, um, the sun, this is as close as it's going to get to you. And mm-hmm. when something's closer, like a street light, it's higher in the sky. Mm-hmm. Okay. The sun is sending electricity here. That's why it's cold. It's exciting the molecules that it hits and that creates the heat. The higher up you go, the thinner the atmosphere, the colder it gets, right? The sun, I don't even think is hot. It's more like a Tesla coil sending energy here. And, uh, you know, plants, think about this. Plants grow in sunlight. They're sending electricity to them. You put a plant in front of a fluorescent light, it'll grow. Put it in front of a fireplace, it'll shrivel up and die, okay? So our seasons, by the way, seasons prove the earth is flat, not that it's a globe. Um, mm-hmm. Because you know that during our summer in the north, is the sun closer to the earth in the heliocentric centric model, or is it farther from the earth during our summer? During our summer, is it closer or is it farther away? Right. It's one of those according to the heliocentric model. I'm not 100% what the answer would be to that, but I know the position because of the tilt of the earth it would appear to be shining more directly towards northern or the, during the summertime it, it's direct, pointing more directly towards the northern hemisphere due to the tilt of earth good good uh good <laughs> well good good that you know that that false belief but now use your mind all right mm-hmm. they don't want you mm-hmm. to use your mind the sun during our northern summer let me turn the app off for a second yeah the sun during our northern summer is farther away, three and a half million miles farther away than it is during our winter. So Mm -hmm. think about this. And and it's harder for you to see this in Canada, but um, uh, I'm in Connecticut and and on June 21st, June and July, I can go down to the water. And as soon as the sun appears on the horizon, I could immediately feel the heat on my face, right? Mm -hmm. 10, five, 10 minutes later, I really feel the heat and it's hot. It gets really hot here. So now- that's a low angle. So the ball is completely tilted away way more than the heliocentric model, than the tilt we're talking. So at sunrise, the tilt is ex- extreme, 89 degrees, right? 89 degree tilt. I can feel the heat on my face. The sun is, is farther away than it is during the winter. Then on December 21st, I could wait until solar noon when the sun is 40, 50 degrees up in the sky, a much more direct angle, three and a half million miles closer and i can't feel the heat on my face hmm. that blows away the, the the idea that the you know that we've all been indoctrinated um into believing so how do how do you find out more information on this if you google flat earth you're going to get all propaganda you're going to it's it's so censored um they at least they're still allowing it on the internet but it's censored and you'll you'll if you google flat earth you can google the like the top video um, a stranger's guide to flat earth, 21 questions, millions of views. Um, but you can Google it with the channel name and it won't come up. It'll, it'll, it'll show you, um, Simon Dan and professor mm-hmm. Dave, you Google flat earth, you get professor Dave, who's an actor, not a professor. Mm-hmm. And he, he makes straw man arguments, gaslighting arguments, and he's just a snarky little dork. Um, but here, here is right here, this question mark, you hit that and up comes, let it load. Cause I just loaded the app. What about mm. seasons? If I hit mm. what about seasons, up comes a playlist that Google won't serve you of videos that will teach you and help you to make up your own mind. Because that's one thing they don't want. They mm. want us giving away our authority, you know, our, our free will to authority. You know, they go, oh, guy, guy in a bow tie told me this. Um, they don't want you thinking for yourself. Who should you trust? You should trust yourself. Absolutely. I'm, I'm going to point towards doors today. I don't want you to. Well, I kind of do, but I don't want you to walk away what uh, flat earther today. I want you to walk away going, wow, Dave pointed out a lot of things. I got some work to do, right? Yeah, I got I, some work. I feel to- like that was the big reason why I wanted to get you on here because as somebody who doesn't believe in the flat earth, I've done research. I've tried to understand what it is. So it's nice to have this information just, just so yeah. I can understand your guys' perspective on things. Cause I think that's really important. Right. Um, but one question, I, like, I have a, f- a lot of questions I want to ask you still, yeah. but like, one question with regards to the orientation of the sun around the globe. 
Right. What causes the sun to, if it's directly above the globe the whole time and it's spinning around, right? It's not a globe of, above oh, the sorry, Earth fall, plane. Uh, flat. Yeah, sorry. Right. And if it's spinning around, what is stopping it from shining all over the flat surface if there's no curvature to the globe to cause the light to not go there? Because as you said before, too, yeah. is the light can go through the atmospheric pressure regardless of how much com- how much compression there is in the pressure. So how come the sun, when it say it's over? No, 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 I didn't say South that. America. I, right. Why isn't it? Why can't you see it in the other side of the flat Earth? Then, if good, nothing good, is stopping the sun. Good question. So, so what I'm saying is, Mount Kanagu is only 185 miles away, and the sun is able to push, right? Mm-hmm. But it goes farther away. Uh, you'll lose the sun, and I'll even show you that. Let me show you that right now. So this is uh, filmed uh, facing west. The sun is setting, and I watched the sun. This is from a high altitude uh, from a drone and a super clear day. And it's below freezing because there's no humidity, super clear. And the sun went in five minutes times. It went down, down, down. Now, if the earth was spinning, it would just keep on going, but it didn't. It went down, down, down. It sat here for 10 minutes and then it did this. It didn't go down anymore. It stopped going down. And as it's moving away, its ability to throw its energy through the atmosphere disappears. And so we have this lingering local light. Watch it again. It just faded out okay this is real people go that's cgi i've proven it's real even the globers don't question it they just go it's out of focus i don't care it's going down 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 and then it just fades away right okay. it happened so fascinating right you got to admit that so let's talk it, it's about a, it's a fast i don't necessarily believe it i think that there was another technical glitch to explain that regardless filmed it though. seven times filmed it seven times yeah i know that's fine and i show I all from- the different things so I'm going to show you yeah. why. Well, okay, I just have a question though, because so say this is the disc, right? The flat what Earth disc? disc. We're not a disc. Sorry, whatever. The flat the known, Earth. The known the world, wall. the circle. It's not yeah. a wall. It's the shoreline. Go ahead. Sorry, the ice wall, the shoreline. Right. And so if the sun is spinning around the top like this, as you depict in your diagram. You think that it would be light everywhere because you watch yeah, the and, flat and, Earth. And when, the, yeah, and when does it go below the horizon? It never does. I can understand if it goes around like this, but if it goes no. around like this, why isn't it constantly in the right. sky? And why is why so, is there horizon? I don't understand why there's a horizon then if it's right. constantly above us then at all times. I'm going to explain that perfectly. So now if you were standing next to the, at the edge of a, a forest that had 150 foot high trees, are the tops of those trees above your eye level? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So now Besides if you were- six feet below me, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah. well, they're, they're, yeah, they're, yeah, they're up know, there. Just, so yeah. if you moved a mile away, all well, those tops of trees are going to, yeah, they're probably still above my eyes. But if you were five or 10 or 20 miles away, the tops of those trees, the tops of Mount Everest would look like it's at your eye level because everything merges into the horizon. But in the distance, no matter how far something is, how high it is, it will merge into the horizon if you can still see it. So now let's take that um, a step further. So this is how our eyes work. And if I could find this video real quick. Um, so as the sun moves away, it moves down. Why are everything again? So, well, oh, that's not what I wanted. Uh, where is my sun video? Give me one second. So yeah, no worries. As, as things move away, you agree that they get lower in the sky. As it rotates around the globe, in my no, no, no. perspective. In my that, well, perspective. If, if, well, if we're on Narnia, yes, it, it does that. But nothing, nothing says that at all. Like here's a, a shot in Bulgaria, super clear day. And you, can, you have to believe one of two things. The sun, whatever it is, is moving away from you, going down because it's just moving away. Or you're falling over backwards faster than the speed of sound, which is making the sun appear to go away when you don't sense any of that. Okay. This is just a belief that makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. So, See, and if, if the sun were to stay in that position at all times and go around the globe, I might, all right, okay, that makes here sense. It go, here it, it goes away. It goes beyond the horizon. So well, I, go, I just don't understand it, how, that, how that stays in the sky. Right, again, so the, it's, it's the apparent horizon. Because, and, and like you, right. you had said it yourself too, that light is the only thing that can get through the atmosphere. No, no, no. I said that the sun's light itself, the direct light, can push farther than the reflected light off of the mountain, right? Like if, if um, I'm standing in a room together with you, you can see me. Do you see me or you see the light that's bouncing off of me? 
see the light that's bouncing off of me. Yeah, light to prove light that, off turn me. the lights off, and now you can't see me. Can't see me. Yeah. Okay. So the light that's about the light that's in the ceiling that's bouncing off of me is that brighter than the light that's bouncing off of me? The light that yes. in the, the source is lot brighter. So the sun is the source. It's brighter. A brighter light can push farther. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like if I had a, a really dim light at the far end of the pool, you probably couldn't see it under the water. Mm -hmm. But if I got a, a million candlelight one, yeah, you're going to see it because it can push farther. So, I'm, mm -hmm. so, so that's twice that you said that I said that the sun can go forever. It doesn't. It only goes for whatever distance. So here we go. This is my flat earth kitchen. We're viewing the sun's path that goes in a straight line. And this could be treetops. It could be Mount Everest. It could be whatever. This is the horizon. Uh, elevated off the, the counters down here, and the sun never goes below it. It could be a cloud deck, whatever it is, mm -hmm. right? And the sun never goes below it, and it's going level. Now, I got a camera on the table at the other end looking this way towards, towards us, okay? And if I showed you this first, I'd say, is this line going down? And you'd say, yes. And I'd say, is this sun going below this opaque barrier, which is at the camera's eye level, or at least it appears to be, but it's not. It's way mm -hmm. above it, like that forest line. And yeah, as definitely. it goes, look at look at that line. Yeah, is that, no, a, le that. Yeah. Is that yeah. a level line? So now I'm going to compare this to an actual sunset over the water. And what do we see? Here's an actual sunset. Is that the horizon, or is that the horizon? But if so, hold on, hold on. Just no. look, just look before you talk, and then 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 you go. This yeah. is going behind what I call the atmospheric deck of opacity. That's where the atmosphere is too thick for the sun to go through. So it's just going beyond it like that. It's not going down. It's going beyond it. Definitely. And, and that's, what, that's what you're seeing right there. Um, so I do understand your analogy about how it does, does, it does look like it is going down in your kitchen. But I think the flaw in your analogy is that the Coke bottles are 80% taking up, or taking up about 80% of the space between the ground and the sun. When in reality, on your concept, it's um, everything on the horizon takes up maybe about 1%, if that even, of the distance between the ground level and the sun. So I don't understand in that analogy how those bottles I will explain break that. Because in explain. theory, if you're going to keep everything relative in terms of how big and scale it up properly, I would say you'd have to use something that is... I my kitchen it's, it's is a bitsy small. My kitchen is only to like the my, real world. My kitchen is only so big. So you can do this yeah. yourself. Go out where you have, you know, a huge view. And on a day where there's cumulus clouds that are nice and spread out, and they're all sitting on that flat deck, and you look up at the clouds over your head, and they're clearly up high. But then I'm here in Connecticut. I can see New York City, which is about 25 miles away. And those clouds are literally merged with the water. Now, I can prove that they're not touching the water or going over the curve because I can zoom in and see everything that's in between them. Because mm -hmm. I'm in a terrestrial point of view. Everything on my hand here is a terrestrial object, and the whole thing merges together. I zoom in. I increase the angular size. I can see them. Clouds are really up here. This is the terrestrial view. Now... So all of those clouds merge together. And because I'm looking across them, I can no longer see the blue sky between them because cloud, 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 and they all come together, right? Uh, so that, that creates- Just a quick question. A, are you, when, when you ask, a, or when you say you're zooming in, are yeah. you changing the point at which you're looking at? Or are you just magnifying? I'm magnifying. I'm increasing the because, size. But, because but then that doesn't, but that doesn't necessarily change your actual perspective from where you are. You're just increasing the resolution of what you can see. It's so the exact. I, I, so I let me explain. That's let not, me explain. That's not the same thing, then. Yeah, yes, it's hundred percent the same. If I'm sitting here and 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 the clouds are merged together, I can do a slow zoom and separate them and see them, or I can keep the uh, camera at the same focus, you know, all the way zoomed out, and get on a boat or a car and go there and just watch everything open up the same. It's exactly the same thing. When I zoom in, it's like I'm moving forward. When I zoom out, it's like I'm moving back. These are things you can test yourself. When but I first not, learned- Not if the picture that you originally taken is at point A, and then you zoom in, you don't miraculously move to point B. You're still at point A. The angle at which you took the picture at is still the same. You're just magnifying the resolution from point A, but you're not actually moving to point B though, if that makes any sense. Can you see what's in my hand? No. Okay. If you zoomed in, like this is far in the distance, 
If you yeah, zoomed yeah, yeah. in, you would open up the angular resolution and you'd see that I have a remote control in my hand. Okay. But you lose sight of that remote control when everything zooms together and its angular size is too small. So why can't we zoom in and see the sun? Because the sun is not a terrestrial object. The sun is a celestial object. So as the sun goes beyond, it goes beyond this cloud, we see it. It goes beyond that cloud, we see it. But this cloud is merged with the horizon and it just goes beyond it. Mm -hmm. And it goes down and it, and it looks like it goes down. It's light can't push through. Now, here's a simple thing you can do. Go in a pitch black room and get a, a flashlight or a candle and put, it, put the candle on the floor on a big round table, whatever. And you'll see that the candle just sheds a light in a small area and the rest of the room will be dark. Now, the other side of the room, you can still see that candle. I agree. But yep. now add atmosphere and density. You can't see the candle anymore. We can prove that because, you know, I did with the sun fade out video. The sun fade out video proves it um, that you just can't see. When you, when you look at things going into the distance, they, um, they get dimmer and the, the, the throw of the sun's light. You know, like when the, when the sun rises in the morning, before it rises, you can read a book on the back side of your house, on the western side of your house. Yeah. How is that possible? What's going on there? Okay. And the answer is because the sun, there's a, there's a thing called daylight and sunlight, two different things. One is the direct light from the sun. The other one is like the backlight a photographer uses. The mm -hmm. sun's electricity lights up the sky, but most of the sky is nitrogen up there and nitrogen fluoresces blue. Fascinating, right? It might be lighting up the dome but it's like a Tesla coil and moving it by a whole bunch of uh, light bulbs. It'll just light off the ones that are just near it. So the sun lights up the sky for the daylight. And then the sun direct sunlight is direct sunlight. Interesting. Um, so I, a few more, a lot of questions this is awesome. It's so much fun, but um, how would you explain lunar eclipses? Yeah. So a lunar eclipse they tell us is um, the sun is, is the earth getting in between the the moon and the sun, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Correct. So there's so many things wrong with the lunar eclipse. One, when you're using a sphere to cast a shadow on another sphere, as you bring that sphere up, it doesn't come up like a perfect shape move. It comes in as an ellipse, it rounds out, and then it leaves as an ellipse. And that's not what we see. But worse than that, there's a thing, a thing called the Seleninian eclipse. And that's where the eclipse starts before the observer sees either the sun or the moon drop below the horizon. Now, if it's the earth that's causing the eclipse, then they're, um, they, one of them would have to be below your horizon. They would have to be you know, in a straight line. But the eclipse started first. And last year, uh, we had an eclipse where it came in from the top. If this is causing the eclipse, it should come in from the bottom. Right. The fact that we can see the sun and the moon above the horizon when the eclipse starts proves not what it is. It proves that it's not the Earth. Mm -hmm. OK, now, so, again, so in the app, what about eclipses? Tons of great videos there. Bring food and water if you click that pop. Yeah, I will bring the popcorn as well, too. Yeah. So your explanation for lunar eclipse is that if you are on a globe, you should see. The Earth go across the moon as a. It starts off no. like an oval shape through the no. on the moon, no. or how would no. you explain the shape on the moon? Then I'm just you can get a. I was ball, a bit get, confused by that one more yeah, time. If you get you a could. single get a single source light and then get a, a ball, a moon, and get another ball, the Earth, and 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 move the ball through the through the um you know through the the beam of light, yeah. and you'll yeah. see that its curvature doesn't come in with this perfect curve that just moves and it doesn't change. Right now, if you did it on a wall, like you had a, a flat moon on the wall, now, I'm not saying the moon is flat and you did it that, you know, with the ball. Um, yeah, you would get the curve would be the same. The other problem is the moon's 100 and 238,000 miles away. You can't cast a shadow with a sharp edge like that, even a mile. It doesn't work. You know, take a take a ball, put it on the ground, an inch over the ground. It has a nice shadow. Lift it up a couple of feet. The shadow's gone. It just just blurs it just fades out okay mm -hmm. so the whole the whole shadow thing and then the solar eclipse even worse the, the 20 uh 2020 or 2019 whatever the last big solar eclipse we had yeah the shadow the supposed shadow of the earth 
of the of the moon on the sun on the earth was 70 miles wide yeah. that would mean that the moon is no bigger than 70 miles wide mm -hmm. okay it would have to, it's ridiculous again what about eclipses blow your mind in there what about I'll, eclipses i'll definitely in the have app? to do that yeah i'll do some research after that as well too on yeah. eclipses. um what do you think about uh I know this was. Did you ever watch the Flat Earth? I forget what it was called. The uh, Behind the Curve documentary on Netflix. So, is that a documentary or is it a movie made by people that were paid to discredit, um, discredit <laughs> Flat Earth? Okay, so let me tell you what happened. There's two yeah. things in that movie that you saw. One, the the ring laser gyro that proved that there's a 15 degree drift. Um, what they cut out of the movie was they took that gyro and they brought it up to a higher elevation. If it was the earth spinning, well, it should have still been 15 degrees per hour, no matter what elevation you are on the surface of the earth. But it wasn't. It was a different, it was a different amount per hour. That proves that it's not the earth spinning, but they cut that part out, okay? And in the movie, you know, when they, when they got the results that it was 15 degrees per hour, Bob goes, yeah, we better not let the, the Globers get this information because they'll run wild with it. But they cut out the part where he said, before we do the test to find out what was causing that. So they literally edited it. And the other part was the, the experiment that Jaron was doing with the laser. So people say, well, I can level a laser. Nobody can level a laser, but we came up with an experiment, three pieces of plywood uh, with a hole in it at the same height. And we used a canal to make sure everything was at the same height off the surface of the canal. And if we could shine the laser through all three, that would prove that the earth is flat. But if the earth is curved, that middle one should be several feet. Uh, maybe it was, uh, maybe it was a num numerous feet yeah. higher and then you couldn't go through. Well, here's what happened. The laser lasers, by the way, spread out. Right. And so the first we, we, we the first time we tried it, it was like a 10 foot wide laser. We're like that's not going to work. So we've got a <laughs> very expensive um, condenser. Well, the yeah. condenser melted. The laser got so hot it melted and broke. We broke the laser. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, all right, well, we're here and we're like, Hey, Raise the light, you know, hold the light in the hole. You see it? No, I don't see it. Now raise it up. And the guy goes, yeah, I can see it now. And Jaron goes, interesting. Because it was interesting. But the problem is, if the earth was curved, he'd have to raise it up like 27 feet or something for him actually to make a difference. But then it cut right there, right after he said interesting. Then he brought it down. And the guy goes, oh, I can, I can see it now. Yeah. Which might prove that the earth is flat. However us being rational, critical thinkers, us flat earthers, and there's Globers there too. We said, this didn't prove anything. Too many variables. It was trees. It was dark. We, we, the laser broke. And we all walked away saying it proved nothing. It might have proved the earth if you had to make a decision. It was more flat earth. But they edited it to put in the movie. These are the same people that made hit pieces on a very famous Connecticut school that had a crazy guy that go to the school. I don't want to say it if it's going on YouTube because they'll, they'll censor it. But um, these, these people are paid movie producers to do propaganda. So there you go. Sorry for um, the long explanation, but when no. people bring this one up, this is not well, a documentary. It's a movie hit yeah. piece. No, it's like I said before, this is super interesting and informative. Just kind of understand your perspective on this stuff. Cause yeah. I've never actually had a talk or a discussion with anybody like this. Um, and like, I feel like a lot of the reasons why you do question a lot of these things and get into conspiracy theories is due to your mistrust of the government and people in power, correct? No, yeah, that, that's not why I got into it. I was uh, first looking into um, what is money? I was like, money is really interesting. How does it work? Right? Because they never yeah. really taught me in school. And yeah. I started researching money and I'm like, wow, money is just a control method. It's fake. It's monopoly money. And then I found out that the IRS is not even federal, right? It's not even like a government agency. It's a private bank run by a bunch of guys. And then I'm like, this is interesting. And so then, you know, that one thing leads to another. It's like, I, that the problem with the human race, which isn't a problem, but it's the cause of the problem is everybody is trustworthy. I trust you, right? You got a backwards yeah. hat on, which is ridiculous, but you know, <laughs> Okay. It's to block out the sun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I like the I don't yeah. like the sun on the back of my neck. So you know, exactly. or maybe maybe my giant <laughs> yeah. my giant head you know, distracts people, or maybe yeah. it makes my headphones more comfortable. Um, exactly. Everyone uh, is. Uh, I live in a world where I'll trust anybody until you burn me once. Well, they've burned mm -hmm. us many many times. 
This is about control, okay? This is all about controlling your mind, controlling your ability to live your fullest life. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, no, like I, I love how that you're very open-minded on these situations. Um, I do have a question as well too, because I feel like you are in, involved in a few other conspiracy theories as well too. If like wait, wait, uh, what wait, other, go ahead. or not say conspiracy theories, but like uh, say, random question though but like say sasquatches like do you believe in say sasquatches or kind of stories along the lines of that for instance well again in the app if you hit the mm -hmm. mud floods tataria button which shows yeah. our, our lost history um i believe there was giants here not that long ago i don't believe dinosaurs existed as explained there were some mm -hmm. giant lizards but not that long ago yeah um you know they're they're um do i believe in sasquatch uh i've seen a lot of evidence saying that there are um Sasquatchy yeah. uh, type animals here, yeah. and uh, and I and I haven't experienced it myself, so I really I can't say either way. I haven't experienced That's it fair. myself. That's fair. I know for myself because I have a guy I actually work with. He, me and him have talked to a flat Earth, and we've gone into other conspiracies as well too. And he himself is also into Sasquatches, and so me and him are always the ones to talk about and try and be open minded with regards to conspiracy theories or unorthodox ideas that society conforms to. Um, but to kind of go back to well, that, that, that's explains why I asked you about Sasquatches, but to go back to the flat earth, um, I do have one question. Like, what do you think if you could just hypothesize and use your imagination, what do you think is either underneath the flat earth itself or past the ice wall as well too? So first, when you, when you look into, when you say what's underneath the flat earth, I ask mm -hmm. you what's underneath the globe earth, because they tell us that, you know, this is what's underneath. Right. Mm -hmm. But yep. you know, you know how deep the deepest hole that was ever dug is. Uh, I know it was in Russia and it was deep. Seven and a half miles, just mm -hmm. under eight miles. Okay. Yeah. So that's equivalent to drilling halfway through the skin of an apple, which is pretty damn thin. Right. It, it's probably less than half, but we'll just say yeah. half scratching through the, skin. the surface. Yeah. So, so they use ground penetrating radar to see what they're going to hit next and that, and they should have gotten their money back because it was wrong every step of the way. Okay. So the ground penetrating radar was wrong every step of the way for the eight miles. But then they had an impenetrable barrier. They couldn't get through it for years and years and years. They finally closed up the hole, but somehow we know what the next 4,000 miles is. Okay. And they tell us it's a molten magnetic core. Well, if you know what the Curie point is, a Curie point is when you heat a magnet before it melts, it gets so hot. It loses its magnetism. There's no such thing as a melted, ma a melted magnet. It doesn't exist, mm -hmm. All right? So what is beyond Antarctica? And the answer is, we don't know, because again, it's off limits. But there's some stories. Uh, one of the books in the app, and the books page is called The Iron Republic. Very interesting. It talks about um, somebody that found an opening in Antarctica and ended up out in this ocean and then came across more land. And there was people on it. And the story was those people came from here in the 1600s when there was tyranny going on. Imagine that tyranny in this beautiful yeah. world we live in. Yeah. Okay. So here's the thing. This is speculation. Do I believe there's more land beyond Antarctica? Yeah, I do. Okay. Do I believe that there's life out there? I don't know. Maybe. I, mm -hmm. There very well might be. But if you call this extra territory, extra terra, if you live there, what you what might you be considered to somebody that lives here, an extra, an extra terrestrial? Mm. And if you came visiting us in this inner space, where did you come from? Outer space, space. an extra terrestrial from outer space, right? So funny. now, yeah. now you know here's a, a map that was supposedly found in Japan ten century, you know, from ten centuries ago, showing all of these other continents. What's out there? I don't know, but that's the answer. You know, we're, we're not allowed to go to Antarctica. There's islands all the way around. There's like islands here, here, here. There's like eight, eight, eight or nine different islands. One of them is the Falkland Islands. Remember that? The Falkland War, right? Why are we fighting over this little island off, the, off of, off of um, New Zealand? And it was because these are all um, naval bases run by the crown. And anybody that tries to get to Antarctica is stopped by force sent home and jailed. Okay. Mm -hmm. Why are they protecting un and ice? They say that there's nothing there, right? Amelia Earhart, by the way, this is her trip. She went around. She went west. 
or she went east. East is a circle, right? East and west are circles around the flat earth. East and west are circles around the globe earth, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody has circumnavigated south, right? Here's a little experiment you do. Here's the center of the flat earth. Here's our magnet. And this compass is pointing towards the magnet. I'm trying to push this compass west and I have to keep turning to maintain a, we a western heading. I have to turn. This is the same on a globe, okay? If I try to go east, right? East is here on the compass. Well, I gotta keep turning because if I keep going straight, I'm going south. Every straight line becomes south, right? Yeah. So billions and billions and billions of people have circumnavigated east and west. If I try to dead wreck in west and I don't correct my course to the north, I'm heading south. And I end up in Antarctica, which is the outer lands, the outer, the outer area of our earth, right? If I try to go south on a globe, I should pop up over here if I go south of Africa. But no one's ever done that. Nobody has ever circumnavigated south north and popped up on the other side of the world. If I head north, I'm heading north until I pass the North Pole. And now I'm heading south. You see the compass just did a 180. Yep. Yep. Okay. So every straight line ends up hitting Antarctica. Fascinating. Mm -hmm. um, an another question, just because they keep coming to me now. They're going to keep this coming. Is awesome. This is all, I love this. Um, how do you explain the North Star in Polaris about how it disappears once you do reach the Southern Hemisphere? Okay, you and I are in a nice big room, yeah. 10 foot high ceilings. There's Love nothing it. in the room. Yeah. And we have random recessed lights and one of them, it will say that's the North Star. Okay, yeah, slightly, yeah. Off, slightly off to the side. Now, expand that room to the size of a city. Okay. Right. And I say, go for a walk five miles that way. You go that way, five miles. Right. So you go five miles. You're heading towards the outside of the room. Well, within a mile, I can't see you because that floor has merged with the ceiling. Right. In a Vegas hallway and in, in some of those hotels, the you know, far end of the hall, the ceiling merges with the floor. That's just in a hallway in a hotel. Right. Yeah. A mile away, it's merged. You're five miles away. I can't see you. Now, if I had a super zoom camera, I could open it up and I could see you again, but I can't. And I say, I say. Unless you went behind the curvature of the globe. Hold on. I'm, we're not in Narnia. <laughs> we're, on a, we're on a flat surface. And now, so yeah, we're yeah. in this, we're in this room. It's flat. Yeah, and I say, yeah. Matt, look up. Tell me the, the stars that you see. Yeah. I can't, I can't see any of those stars. I'm like, I see the North Star. Can you see? You're like, nope, I can't see it because you're mm -hmm. too far away. And now add atmosphere in there and stuff even before it merges with the floor merges into the atmosphere. There's been many reports of observatories as far as 30 degrees south that have seen Polaris. Those observatories have been shut down since they made those reports, mm -hmm. right? That's yep. impossible, impossible. See what I did there? And that's, uh, that's another thing. I, you know, are you familiar with the Georgia Guidestones? Maybe not. No, I you know. do, no, I do not know about that. So the Georgia Guidestones are this uh, crazy uh, Stonehenge-like structure that was popped up in Georgia here in the United States in 1981, I believe. Yeah. And it's that in eight different languages, Ten Commandments of the World for the New World Order, basically. That's mm -hmm. a whole other story. But in the stones, yeah. there's this little hole right here, right? And when you look through that hole, right, it's been up for over 40 years. What do you see? You see Polaris, do a time lapse, all the stars go around. How can we be corkscrewing, corkscrewing through space in four different directions at once, traveling four and a half billion miles a year in one of those directions, and Polaris never moved, right? We're corkscrewing through space like this in your helio nonsensical bullshit model, okay? <laughs> all right? So we're corkscrewing all these different directions. So let's talk about the speeds. I told you before, at the equator, we're spinning 1,000 miles an hour. So when you watch the sunset, you're falling over backwards at 1,000 miles an hour. And that's why the sun is appearing to go down, okay? Mm -hmm. We're orbiting. You have no idea how fast, right? Too fast, yeah. So 66,600 miles an hour, okay? 66,000 miles an hour. 
how fast is 66,000 miles an hour? Okay. Let me get, you know what? I'm going to just bring it. In. Uh, actually, I'll just, no, let me do this. So 66,000 miles an hour. We're chasing the sun at, um, want to take a guess? No. <laughs> we're, we're chasing the sun at close to a, a different estimates, but a half a million miles an hour. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to quickly share my screen here for a second. Yeah, go for it. I know. Thank you. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to talk while I uh, multitask. No, 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 like I meant like, yeah, go, go for it. All right. Absolutely. So, oops, I got to just stop that one second. I got to share with sound. So let's take the slower speed, the 66,000 miles an hour. This is called the hypersonic sled. Okay. Now watch how fast this thing goes. Ready? Yep. Love it. All right. Let's watch it one more time. We're Beautiful. orbiting, we're orbiting the sun 10 times faster than that. And we're mm -hmm. chasing the sun at a hundred times that speed. Okay. Mm -hmm. So here's the question. Who told us that? Who told us that? These are the guys that NASA told us that, right? Who are liars, right? Then we look at this. This is called nature. This is called nature. Mm -hmm. Nature doesn't lie. Nope. Use your common sense. Are we going a hundred times faster in one direction, a curved direction, by the way, and corkscrewing 10 times faster than that hypersonic sled. And then we have water that does this. This is all you need to know that the heliocentric bullshit model is complete and total nonsense. Okay. Well, I think that's just because the nature itself is part of the globe. It's spinning with the globe itself. It's part of it. And then the atmosphere itself is protecting the globe from all the conditions outside. <laughs> cool story, bro. <laughs> Love it. Love hey, it. Yeah. Matt, I, yeah. I have to say that's the most, I'm going to say it, retarded thing I've heard all week. Okay? It's just yeah. part of it. Yeah. Use your common sense, dude. That, that hey, is, and then, that and is to go back, and, then, hey, hey, and then go back to you as well, too. I'm going to say the last hour, I've heard the most retarded stuff as well, too. Okay. So give me as your much as I appreciate I, and I, I, I appreciate accept it. That. I love it as well too. I, I appreciate but, it. So yeah. let's let's do this. I love it. Give me your one your best proof that the earth is a globe. What do you have that's your best proof the, of the earth being a globe? Just My one. best just well, I mean, besides pictures themselves. Yeah. Oh, wait, oh, wait, 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 hold on. Yeah, pictures. I know, I know. Yeah. Pictures. Yeah, so I love pictures. You but... love pictures, right? Did, did you watch Jurassic Park? I did actually. Look, it was a good movie. This Except is the proof last, that the last one was crappy, though. This is dinosaurs are real because I have a picture, right? Yeah. I have a picture. So what what pictures are you referring to? Are you re referring to these pictures of this planet, which is both of these by NASA, which are over two years apart, but none of the clouds change? Are you talking about this picture of Earth, where the United States got twice the size somehow? Okay. Are you talking about this photo of Earth that was that was on everyone's iPhone? that the creator of it, Robert Simmon, a NASA visual artist, admitted he made it in Photoshop from strips of data, and he's the lazy Photoshopper. He used yeah. the same clouds again and again. Are those the pictures that you're talking about? Well, I say just in general pictures themselves of the Earth, and you can go Wait, online as well, too, and see live pictures from satellites. And I think just the concept of satellites being out there and us being able to have this Zoom you can. online you can. with you satellites can. is proof that the right world is round because so, you have these satellites <laughs> circling the globe yeah yeah and so the, and then so that, gravity itself shows as well too that the earth is round because these yeah. satellites rotate around things there's gyroscopes like i had no ex uh, ex air force pilots and people who worked on these planes and gyroscopes i worked with one this summer who was explaining how gyroscopes worked and how the curvature of the earth is needed to know they need to know that to calculate the speed of these planes, the direction of their trajectory that they fire at enemies. I know my buddy who is an ex-military Marine, they had to calculate the curvature of the globe to be able to shoot a certain distance because the bullet drops around the curvature of the globe. So it's all these things, small things that come together that create my reality, my, my perception of reality mm -hmm. that make me understand that the world is a globe and the whole universe itself is full of other planets that are spherical in shape 
because gravity's pulling them all together and they're all these are these are all other. unsupported claims that you have zero proof of so let's just I have start a lot with... of proof of it actually it's all online i don't have any with myself right now so so but, but I, there's gonna, a lot of proof out there as well too to justify my claims as well too there, along with actually, your claims as well too there's there actually are... there's actually none so let, let me address some of the things that you More say than yours. we're having well, I'm showing you proof so we can see too far. I'm showing you proof yeah. that um, 99% of all communications are done with undersea cables, right? The, uh, the layout of the undersea cables prove that we're not a globe because there's like nothing from Santiago to Australia. It goes all the way up into the north. Plane routes prove yeah, that, that, that that's how we connect the internet together. That's ethernet cables. Yeah. So are we going to, are we going to a satellite or are we connecting ver- ver- on these cables? Wi-Fi is to satellite. Wi-Fi GPS. is not the satellite. Sorry, Wi-Fi G- GPS. Is- GPS. Sorry, is to satellite. So, so that's another false belief. Let's let, let's unwind that one. Um, you know who the largest consumer of helium in the world is? No idea. NASA owns all of the helium companies in the world, and they launch um, what they call satellites, which are satellites hanging from balloons. Okay. Yeah. And uh, they admit that there's tens of thousands of these things up there. They can control where they go by electrostatically raising and lowering them into different wind conditions, different wind channels. And this is your satellite. Now, I don't, I'm not even claiming that GPS is used by satellites because GPS doesn't work when you're out over open ocean. It doesn't work in the southern oceans. It doesn't work over the Amazon jungle. Why are there no GPS? Why are there no satellites you know, in those areas? Okay. And the answer is because it's all done with ground-based towers and there's no towers in the middle of the Amazon. There's no towers between California and Hawaii when your plane goes into approximated mode when it's like 100 miles offshore, okay? GPS is the ground positioning system. It used to be called Loran, but then they put a graphic overlay on it in the 80s or 90s, whatever it was. And um, that's, that's, that's the, I mean, that's provable by where you can't get GPS. And these things are crashing all over the world and they quickly scoop them up. But everybody with their cell phones are getting pictures and videos of them. And uh, these are not falling out of space. They're on balloons. Okay. I, I don't necessarily, I understand the, what you're kind of bringing. I don't, I'm, I don't believe that. I'm just going to keep it very blunt with you. You don't believe um, it. No. And I think as well too, is I've been in planes as well too, where you can on a clear day, when you're on a plane, you can, see the curvature of the earth so not only do i understand or have a general understanding of the concepts that make the earth round is i've been in a plane before where i've actually seen the curvature of the earth as well too and on top of like the whole gravity let, let, let's do well one thing is, before I've, you get into gravity let's let's yeah. address your plane uh, yeah neil degrasse tyson admits that you can't see the curvature of the earth from even as high as felix Baumgarten space jump 120, 127,000 feet. He said, the earth is too big to see the curvature from this height, okay? You can see it right there though. You can yeah, see yeah. how it's so, round so, at the top. That's curvature. It, yeah, yeah, no, no. That's called a fisheye lens. All of this land, we can tell by the lakes and the rivers, this is all New Mexico. New Mexico now covers a third or, or a quarter of the earth, okay? Yeah. This is a fisheye lens, all right? When, uh, when you look, when you go up to 100, this is 120,000 feet, flat and stationary. The sun is right here, okay? And it's lighting up a local area of, this, of the earth, right? So you can't, see, um, you can't see the curvature from an airplane because the way you see is the same distance, the same distance, depending on the conditions, in all different directions, which creates a flat circle. So the other thing is, if you look at the earth curvature formula, when you're flying in an airplane, you should, the, the horizon that you see should be like 70 or 80,000 feet below you, right? When you're flying at like 30,000 feet, the horizon should be below you at that. Um, I'm trying to find a graphic for you just so you can see it. Here we go. Yeah. So at 39,000 feet, the horizon should be 242 miles away on the ground. And no, on the ground, If you're at 39,000 feet, it should be 242 miles away. The drop mm-hmm. would be another 39,000 feet. So in an airplane, the horizon that you see should be 78,000 feet below you. But in an airplane, you can look out the left window. You can look out the right window, see the horizon, and draw a line, and it's going to go right across your eyes. 
They're both at the same level. It should be 80, 78,000 feet below you, okay? But you think you see a curve because, because of the way your eyes work. When you look forward, you see the same, you see the same distance in all directions, okay? So they said looking at 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, you see the same distance before the atmosphere um, pushes, pushes together, right? So here you are standing. You see the same distance in all directions, whether you're on an airplane or whatever. And this is the same distance as this. But if you draw a straight line, you're going to say that's the curve of the earth. No, that's just the limit of your eyes. That's the limit of your eyesight across the earth plane, right? Go onto a big football field, put a football on the 10 yard line, go to the opposite end zone, lay down and put your head on the ground and look at that football. And you, that football will be sitting right on your horizon. Then stand up. And you can see the rest of the field all the way into the end zone. Okay. Now that proves that your earth, that your football field is a globe, according to you. But that just shows you that you increased your angle, increased the angular size. You can now see the, the land beyond the football. But when you're laying down, that football is going to be laying on the horizon. Even some of the bottom of the football will be missing because of some of the grass blades ahead of it will create a false horizon. But when you stand up, you can see the last 10 yards into the end zone and into the, into the clubhouse. Cool. Um, okay. Well, actually another question that's kind of popped in my head because you were saying, because the angle at which you can't see the sun, correct. Is that why there's the horizon? I forget exactly, but say if I forget exactly how you explained it. So pardon me for if I said that wrong, I probably did, but when you're in a plane, however many feet above the glow or the flat earth, how can you not see the sun then that's on the other side of the flat earth? If you're so high above, how come you aren't able to see the sun? How come it's still below the horizon? Well, the earth is below you and the sun's above you. How, how does something below you affect your field of view when you're above it? Well, it, it's the same. You can you. see the sun much farther. Like when I had my drone up watching that sun fade out, my friends were at the beach and they saw, they saw the um, sun set from the bottom up 10 minutes earlier, but somehow I can still see it. And if I was in an airplane, I could see even farther. But the height of an airplane and the distance that the sun is, it still merges into that cloud deck, into that atmospheric deck, even if you're above the clouds. It merges into the atmospheric deck. But um, there has been many flights, like there was a flight from California to Germany. And the, the whole time, the sun never set. And we, we, we tracked it. Someone did a time lapse and we could see all the cities and stuff. But the sun never set. And then it made it all the way to Germany. So I think California, north, all the way across over to Germany. And the sun just went around and it never set. So your claim that you can't see the sun, I'm saying you can. Okay? You can. I'm saying you can't, though, because I've been you on can. a plane at night. No, no. But it, so, uh, no, no, no. no. This, is, this, is my, this is my conclusion. So this is the flat earth, right? Correct? Yeah. If you're up here... Right? Much closer, I'm, much closer, much closer. Yeah. And now I mean, it's an example like you do in your kitchen where it's just like the yeah. scale of everything is a bit off. But so the ground's at my lap right now. I'm right here. Right. And the sun's up here. Yeah. How does the ground block my field of view from something that's up here? Right. So, that's so, so like the angle doesn't work there. That's it. That's do, it actually, it actually physics. does work. Like, it actually does work. A different dimension where the laws of physics so, are different now. So, or no, no. So think about this. A, uh, a truck at the end of your street, like on Long Street, and you have a truck, uh, a regular Mack truck, but it's a uh, half a mile down the road, that truck, the top of that truck is going to look like it's at your eye level, but you know it's higher, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So yeah. you're standing under a street light, which is above you, um, 25 feet above you, whatever it is, okay? And you're watching those street lights go down, and the street lights that go beyond that truck, eventually, that light will be blocked by the truck. Because here's the truck. Because the here's, truck's above my eye level. The truck's above your it. eye level, but it not looks like it. no, but not it looks it, it looks like it's at your eye level. But okay. But so, there's no truck though when you're in a plane. There's only the ground. No, there's no, the no. Ground, I, uh, the, the, plane, the that, truck that, and I am not the same level. The truck's above me, so that's why it blocks my level because it's in that's the That's right. Field. Right, right. And so the, but the ground's below me, so it doesn't. The atmospheric deck of opacity blocks the sun i showed you that with an actual sunset you, you didn't comprehend it it's fine and you can't it, it literally becomes opaque but as i showed you in this video the sun is staying up way 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 too long now if i was flying the other way the sun would disappear the other thing is 
even if the sun is visual, you can't see it because it's light doesn't even make it to your eyes. It'll stop even though nothing's blocking it. There is somebody and we're trying to find the video, a guy that um, um, had balloons up or, or had a special camera that can see a different wavelength of the sun. And when the sun is nowhere to be seen, he can put on this infrared filter, whatever it was, and there's the sun again. So the light that we see can't go forever. It only goes a certain distance. So these are things that they don't teach you in school. These are things that are blocking you from seeing the, the plain reality in front of you. And I'm giving you the tools today, which is, and we've gone way over the half hour, right? I, know, I love it. It's yeah. awesome. <laughs> so, so here's the thing. I was ignorant to all of this. Mm -hmm. And so were you before we talked. Now you have the opportunity to look into it farther for yourself. And here's the thing. What's my name? Flat Earth Dave. All right. So my first name is Dave. Dave. Yeah. Do you know that my first name is Dave? That's that is how you would like to be. Um, is known my as. first name Dave? Yes or no? I do not have your birth certificate, but that's okay. How so you, you that's, so that's, you that's believe what, that's the name you go by. Though you yes. believe my first name's Dave. Okay. Yes, and I have no reason to not believe you. Right. Okay. Belief takes no effort. It's yeah. just a thing. Like, you know what? I've got a um, $100 bill in my pocket. Okay, you believe me. I don't have a $100 bill in my pocket. So that's a false belief, okay? Yeah. Right? So knowing takes time, energy, thought, energy, critical thought, time, right? And most people are like, I don't have, I don't have time for that. I, I got I to gotta go you know, play a video game or drink a beer or, or yeah. something. Or you know, I got to go to work, right? Yeah. Work for fake money, right? So I'm giving you the tools and this is the tool, the app. It's three dollars. I'm not. I'm. You know. Trust me. It's not about the money. It's about training people. If you want to learn about flat Earth, the app will show you what you need to know. You can spend 500 hours searching the internet. You're gonna get so much crap. You're gonna just give up. And then, and what you can find in an hour on the app will be like, all right, you know, like every question you have is answered in that FAQ section on the app. Mm -hmm. And what I tell people is. I am offering three Bitcoins. You follow crypto, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Three Bitcoins for one proof of the globe. But bit, you, what you have to do is yeah, every day on the app, there's a featured video right on the home screen there. Yeah. Tap that video, watch it every day for two weeks. And then if you have one proof of the globe, send it to me and you win three Bitcoins. Absolutely. I love that. What would be constitute as proof of the globe? Like a picture, a video? No, just, uh, just, just, just verify the curvature. Verify, you know. That, uh, that we can have a vacuum of space next to a uh, pressurized atmosphere, which breaks every law of thermodynamics. Just prove axial rotation, spin, um, anything, just any proof at all. But and when you, before you said, well, we, I've got pictures, there's thousands of them. No, there's not. NASA admits they don't have any photos of Earth. Okay, what about like the Japanese government? I know they have satellites up there that do give yeah. you real-time information and pictures about the earth. And yeah. So you're talking about the Himawari eight satellite and we found a, it's all run by NASA and we found a backdoor, uh, an open server. Maybe somebody tipped us off uh, an insider um, that shows, and it has thousands and thousands of folders um, of all of the images. And what they do is they have a model of the earth, a physical model of the earth, right? The blue marble model of the earth um, or, or, Actually, no, it, they, they, I'm sorry. They have just the blue model flat map. They have, they wrap it around a, in Photoshop around a globe. And then they have real time weather data every 15 minutes that they put on the globe. And then they put the, the day night terminator on there. And we found this server. We have it all in the app under what about satellites? Look up Himawari 8. And you will see that the Himawari 8 is provenly not, not a, not a, uh, a conspiracy theory. Provenly a lie. Proven. Interesting. No, and that's added to the list of things that I shall need to research. Proven a lie. About this. Yeah. Proven. I love it. Awesome. Well, Hi, Matt. I enjoyed every second of this, David. Even if we do have very contradicting beliefs, this has been well, awesome. And no, you have I a belief. I have this. a knowing. And, and I'm not <laughs> claiming, I'm not claiming I know the what's underneath yeah. the earth or what's beyond Antarctica or what's above yeah. our head or who made this place or why it's here, you know. I, I know that it's all about controlling our minds. And if they have us believe, mm -hmm. believing that we live on a spinning ball lost in space, then they're hiding the creator. They're hiding our true potential. They're hiding um, the fact that we are free and that nobody has authority over us. 
they're using it to control our minds. Because if you're spinning out of control, lost in space, how are you going to make a proper decision about anything? That, and that's valid. I think, and you made a very good point. I think that everybody should get the facts or understand all the facts that go into a situation and come to a conclusion on their own. And I definitely agree with that statement. I think that's both things we can agree on with that, I think. And, and just, so, just so you know, people are like, oh, you know, flat earth. Let me just show you in the app, if I hit that little handshake button, these are the other flat earthers just near me. Look at all those dots, okay? These are, other, these are other flat earthers. How many people do you think are part of the flat earth community, if you had to estimate? Well, the way I look at it is my app, um, I'd say about one, I'm still a, like less than a quarter of, uh, less than 25% of the people that have my app have even realized there's a friend finder on it or haven't upgraded. So yep. there's only 25% of the people. There's 30,881 people at the time of this that have registered on here. Mm-hmm. So that's, you know, times that times four is a four or five is the number of people that have the app. And then I think that my app is in the hands of less than 1% of the flat earthers on the world. So we're talking, you know, 120,000 people times a hundred. That's what is that? I, I mean, what, one point or 12, 12 million, 12, 12 million, million. I, or 120 million, whatever it is. I think it's hard to say, but they're everywhere. They're growing. And here's the thing. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. You can't that's unsee it. That's valid. So, For, all right. Do you have any last thoughts or anything you want to say before yeah. we wrap this up? Anybody that uh, sees this, if you have a, if you know of a podcast, if you have a show, any show with any audience that thinks the earth is a globe, that's maybe even never discussed flat earth. Get me on that show. Go to flatearthdave.com. There's a booking link where you send some information over and then we work out the booking details. FlatEarthDave.com, links to the app are there, links to all sorts of videos. And you don't have to get the app. Just go to the app store and look, read the reviews. That's all you awesome. got to do. Read the reviews sure. and you'll become a flat earther. <laughs> and, you'll lose, and, lose, and you'll lose the respect of your family and friends also. <laughs> awesome. Well, I loved every second of this. We definitely need to do this again. Um, while you did not give me enough evidence to change my mind, I am very interested even more so on the whole flat earth and i do want to dive deeper into the whole all the facts that you are all the potential facts that you had brought forward there and ask i ask, understand your situation a bit yeah. better now but at ask the end of the day though sorry what were you saying i was gonna say ask sasha baron cohen he knows he, he knows the earth is flat <laughs> he knows he does yeah, the, he's a flat earther a, Kyrie irving Kyrie Irving is a flat earther, not yeah, a dumb guy, earther. right? <laughs> not a dumb guy at all. Right. No, I, yeah. I feel like that. I feel you guys do have a misconception at times, though. But anyways, this was awesome. Um, I respect your viewpoint on everything about this, but hopefully, Pat, are you are again. you putting this up on YouTube? Yeah, I probably will be. I know for sure I'll be putting it up at least on my podcast, but I'll most likely be putting it up on YouTube too, just for like the visual aspect or thing, because you did bring that whole when PowerPoint I, system. I don't send, know how you me, use that so easily, but send me the link. <laughs> Send me the link and I'll share it and, uh, and people will get to see how the other side thinks. Awesome. I love this, David. All right, All right man. Thanks. All right. Ciao, amigo. See you. Bye. Adios.